Okay, for 8b we have something where it's not in the same form. We can't just look at it and tell immediately what our ab is. This is one that requires completing the square. So first we need to walk through this one and complete the square first. Then we can find all this information that's asking. First thing we want to do is group the x's and the y's together and the 144 we're going to put on the other side of the equation. So we're going to put 16x squared, then we have minus 96x plus y squared plus 8y equals negative 144. So we first do that uh, by grouping them, the light, like variables together. We want to factor, take a common factor out of the first two and second two, and uh, we're just going to do that with uh, numbers. Okay, so this we're going to take out a 16. We're not going to plot an x, we just want the number only, so we're going to take out a, a 16 there, and when we do, we get uh, x squared minus 6x. Now, I want to leave a space in there because this is where we're going to do the complete the square step later. We'll get a number that's going to end up being added inside there, so we want to leave that uh, space alone. And we have plus y squared, 8y, and then nothing, and equals 144. So again, I'm leaving a space in there. Now this, uh, there's nothing to take out because I just have a y squared and an 8y, so nothing I have to worry about pulling out there. So I only have to do, I'm going to do complete the square with these two. Now for the first one, for complete the square, I'm going to take negative 6 divided by 2 and I get negative 3. And then I'm going to take negative 3 and square it and I get positive 9. So you're always going to divide by 2 and you're always going to square uh, on that one. So the number you get in step number 2, you want to add it to both sides of the equation. But when you add it to the right hand side, don't forget to multiply this by the number outside the parentheses. This is the most common mistake I see students making on this kind of problem, forgetting to multiply it by the number in front. It's very important that you remember to multiply that. Don't just add 9, you're adding it 9 times 16. So you add 9 inside here, but on outside here you have to multiply it by the 16. Uh, next, we want to do complete the square with this one here. We're going to take 8, we want to divide it by 2, and we get a 4. And then you want to square the 4, and you get 16. Now this one, you can just add 16, because there's no number in front like we had before. So in this case, we're just going to add 16 only, because there's, uh, there's nothing outside there uh, that we have to pull out. Now we're ready to factor it, so we're going to do this. This is x minus, uh, we know we're going to have, we'll have an x uh, in here squared, and then this is going to be uh, something with a y squared. Uh, so for this one, what goes inside the uh, parentheses will be the first step of the complete the square that we had up there. When we divide this number by 2, we got negative 3. That's what's going to go inside there. 16 is still out front. For this one, when we divide that by 2, we got plus 4. So if you take all of this, negative 144, add the 9 times 16, add the 16, you're going to be left with 16 on this side when you add all that together. We're almost there. We have to get a 1 after the equal sign. So we're going to divide everything by 16 and we get x minus 3 squared over 1, we're going to reduce that, plus y plus 4 squared over 16 equals 1. So this that we have uh, is what we want to get to. We want to, get, we want to bring it all down to this type of format where you have something quantity squared with some numbers underneath. So even though 16 and 16 goes away, I wanted to actually put a 1 underneath, un, underneath here so we actually have a placeholder there. So this, let's, let me erase this now so we can get some room and we'll put this now on top. x minus 3 squared over 1 plus y plus 4 squared over 16 equals 1. So this is the equation I'm now going to work with for filling out all this information here. So now we just start the problem with it in that form. Now what I notice about uh, that is that this is not in the 
not centered at zero, zero, because I've got other numbers after the X and the Y. To find the center, you want to take the opposite sign of what you see inside the parentheses. So instead of a negative 3, we have positive 3. Instead of negative 4, we have positive 4. Uh, instead of positive 4, we have negative 4. So we have 3 and negative 4. So opposite sign of each of those we did from the equation over to here. It's another place I see people make a mistake is forgetting to take the opposite sign. So don't forget to do that opposite sign of each one you see in the formula itself. Okay, now we have to figure out which way is this going to be oriented, left or right or up and down. We notice that the larger number is underneath the Y. That means we're going to have an ellipse that opens up and down just like that. The larger number is always the A squared. So this A squared is not equal to 1. A squared is equal to 16 and B squared is equal to 1. Take the square root and you get A is 4 and B is 1. We're going to use our formula for C. Again, it's A squared minus B squared. The sign inside here is opposite of what it is in the formula, so we have that. Next, we're going to do 4 squared minus 1 squared. And so this is going to be the square root of 16 minus 1, which is the square root of 15. Now, square root of 15 does not reduce down uh, anymore in that case and uh, and so that's about uh, three point uh, actually let's see it's 3.9 approximately is what it is a little bit less than four because square root of 16 would be four so 3.9 would be the decimal equivalent now that we have a B and C we're ready to graph this one so this we're going to first start by graphing the center the center is going to be at three comma negative 4. So that's what you always want to begin with is the the center. Your numbers for A and B and C, all that is measured from the center. Since I know that it goes up and down, the A value is going to go up and down. So from this part we're going to go up 4 and we're going to go down 4. We're going to go and then left and right we have to go uh, 1. So we've got, we've got that, which means that we have a, an ellipse that's going to be all down here in the, the fourth quadrant. So that's what the graph's going to look like. The vertices are this one and this one. At the major axis, that's where it's going to be at. So for the vertices, we have 3, 0. We can read that directly off the graph. And also, the other one's going to be at 3, negative 8. So 3, negative 8 is the other one. So we have those two are the vertices. Uh, for the foci, your foci is uh, almost 4. So actually, the foci are almost right on top of the vertices. They're almost right next to it because it's, uh, it's pushed almost all the way back because the C value is so big. It's, uh, so we go up here 3.9 and down 3.9. If I wanted to express that as a foci, now the x value we know is a con that's going to be 3 all the time. And so to get to this point and that point, what I'm doing is from the, the y value, which is negative 4, I'm adding and subtracting 3.9, which is also the same thing as square root of 15. And so that's how I'm going to do my foci. It's 3, it's the, that's the x value. And I take the y value here, negative 4, and add square root of 15 up to here, subtract square root of 15 to get that point down below. I can leave my answer as plus or minus with the square root because I can't simplify that any further. I can leave my answer in that form. The major axis is 2 times a, 2 times 4 is 8, minor is 2 times b, 2 times 1 is 2. Eccentricity is c over a. So that's going to be square root of 15 over 4. If you're curious about the decimal on this one, uh, that's going to be 0.97. We mentioned in class that the, the farther away the decimal is from 0, the narrower it actually is. So this one's pretty narrow, and so that's why we have a uh, value for e that's so far away from 1, or so far away from 0, because if, e, if you have e equals 0, that's a perfect circle. 
And so this, uh, the farther you are away from zero, then the more elongated it looks.